How do we understand native speakers when they talk to us? This is a question I received just recently from one of my lovely subscribers. It's something that we all ponder here and there when we're learning a language, right? Many times in the past, I've opened up a conversation with a Spanish speaker, for example. Something as simple as, hola, como estas? And they respond in gibberish, which I have no idea, it does not register, right? Now, obviously this can be extremely frustrating, especially for those who have already learned over 5,000 words, those who have already gotten a frequency dictionary and memorized it, right? Whenever I fall into issues like this, fall into these kind of situations, I always like to approach, approach the situation scientifically. I like to test shit out, figure it out, and see what the issue is, right? So today I'm going to help you guys with that. Real simple, guys. Think about it. What is the problem? Have you memorized 5,000 words yet? Not just any 5,000 words, but the first 5,000 words in a frequency dictionary. Linguists say that we use around 5,000 words in our day-to-day -day conversations. And that's if you talk a lot, right? So number one, you definitely want to make sure that you memorize the 5,000 most common words, right? You want to make sure that the reason you don't understand is simply lack of comprehension, lack of vocabulary, okay? After you complete that task, you want to make sure that there is no gaps in your slang, right? Especially with Spanish. Spanish varies so much between different countries. The slang varies, so you might know the slang from Spain, but as soon as you go into another country like Venezuela or something like that, you will not understand the slang. And the slang could be something so simple like, how are you, like, or what's up, you know what I'm saying? Que rollo? They don't use that in every Spanish-speaking country, okay? Que hubo? There's a lot of different ways to say, like, what's up, how are you, como esta, you know, como estas. There's so many different ways, and you have to know them between countries, right? Even to say hello, there's different ways. So you want to first make sure that you don't have a gap in the 5,000 most frequently used words, formal words, and then you want to make sure you do not have a gap in your slang. You can use Memorize for this. There's plenty of lessons on slang in the, on the Memorize website. If you don't know what that is, it's Memorize.com. I believe it's M-E-M-R-I-S-E.com. Google it. You'll find it. Or you can get yourself a slang dictionary. They offer them in numerous languages. I know that they offer it in Spanish, for sure in German, and for sure in Tagalog. Three languages which I've studied and all of these languages have had a slang dictionary. It's that important, right? Now once you solve this problem, you want to make sure you don't have a gap in your idioms, okay? Idioms are phrases, words put together which create different meanings, right? For example, if someone's learning English and they hear the phrase, in over your head, you're in over your head, they're going to think of it in the logical terms, right? They're going to say, I'm in over my head, like it just, it's incomprehensible. They will not understand unless they understand the meaning of the whole idiom. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself an idiom dictionary. I know this is a lot of work, guys, but these are questions that you have to ask yourself. There's no point in getting frustrated. You have to find the problem and attack it with all your might, one step at a, at a time. I would say first the 5,000 words, then the slang dictionary, and then you want to go on to the idiom dictionary. At least they, they even have frequency dictionaries for idioms. You want to search out one of those. Those are in almost all of your major languages. After you do that, what you want to do is you want to make sure that there isn't just a lack of processing power in your brain, right? Now, you don't have to get brain surgery, but what you can do is you can download certain podcasts. One podcast which I enjoy is, I believe it's called uh, Spanish Obsessed, and they offer beginner, intermediate, and advanced level podcasts. And the intermediate, which is a good place to start if you have a basic understanding of the language, the intermediate podcasts speak slowly, okay? They speak slowly and use basic vocabulary. So be before being able to understand advanced conversations, you're going to need to be able to understand this. If you cannot understand these intermediate podcasts, you're not going to be able to understand the more advanced stuff. Simple as that. Why? Because they use less idioms. It's a lot more controlled. The, sub the topics are a lot more basic, right? But I'm not saying to stay here. I'm saying to get out of here as soon as you can. As soon as you build an understanding to where you're comfortable understanding, for the most part, most of what is being said, you want to move on to the advanced podcasts, which in my opinion are a little bit below native. 
okay, they still speak a little slowly and use a little bit of slang, okay? Once you do that, you can move on to the basics like commercials, things of that nature. But a good test to know what your issue is, right? A very good test, which I have used in the past to know, is to listen to music, okay? Listen to Spanish radio and listen to the songs that they play. Can you understand them, right? If you can't understand them, it could be for a, a mirage of reasons. It could be the accent, it could be the speed, it could be the cadence. But what you want to do is you want to look up the lyrics for these songs and then tell me do you understand them. If you understand the lyrics on the page but you don't understand the first time around when you're listening to the song, the issue is simply your processing power, right? Now if there's words in the, in the lyrics which you don't understand, obviously the issue is your, your vocabulary, right? So this is, this is a way, this is something that I use to gauge what the issue is. Now if the issue if you, is your vocabulary, learn more vocabulary. It's a process guys, it can't be done overnight. Now if the issue is simply your comprehension, compre your power of comprehension, your brain's power, then you want to start on those intermediate podcasts and move to the more advanced and then move to native, okay? Now, I know this can be frustrating guys. There's a few other things you can do, right? Maybe you just don't hear the differences between the sounds. For that, you can go check out my video on minimal pairs testing and approach it that way. Okay, guys? But the number one way to, to kill this problem, and I know it's an answer a lot of you guys aren't going to want to hear, what you got to do is just fucking listen to more Spanish. Listen to more of whatever language you're learning. Listen to it more, right? That's the absolute best way, okay? Spend hours a day. All the radio you listen to should be in Spanish. Every movie you watch should be in Spanish, whether you understand it or not. Now, another thing you can do is watch different, you know, different vlogs, different YouTubers in Spanish. On the YouTube videos, they have a little box below the video where it allows you to choose the speed of the video. You can slow it down or speed it up. Slow it down. Listen to it in slow mo. I know a lot of podcasts on. Uh, the, I, the iPhones allow you to slow them down as well. Do that. That's pretty much it, guys. Hope this video was useful. Subscribe to my channel for more videos daily for the rest of summer. Then we're going to be stepping up that quality. With that being said, guys, no será en sus estudios. Los amo. Nos vemos pronto. And to all my Americans out there, all of those from the United States, happy 4th of July. Peace.